Hi, everyone. Um, you should be popping in right now to um, our presentation um, for virtual Transfer Triton Day for the Department of Political Science. My name is Natalie Eicher, and I am the Undergraduate Student Affairs Advisor for the Department of Political Science. So thank you all for being here today. Um, just a quick note that this session will be recorded. And so hopefully in about a week or so, we will have this presentation up on our department YouTube page, as well as on our website. Um, in the event that you need to hop out early, um, or just want to look at it again. Um, and we'll keep that on our website uh, until next year. Um, so with that, uh, we'll go over the presentation outline. So these are just a few of the things that I'll be talking about today. Um, so our curriculum, opportunities in the department, uh, campus opportunities that relate to uh, the majors in our department, careers in graduate school, um, excellence in and out of the classroom. So you know, what does that look like? Um, student involvement and support, advising structure here at UCSD, and then just a quick conclusion and we can have a Q&A after. Um, you are more than welcome to pop in your questions in uh, the Q&A function um, at the bottom of the screen. Um, my colleague, Joanna Peralta, who is a uh, student services coordinator for our department, as well as the OSD liaison, I'm just going to help answer questions uh, today in that area, um, but we will have a lot to cover. And so I may actually answer your question throughout the presentation. And if that's the case, uh, she'll just make a note there on your question. But if for some reason I don't cover it, uh, feel free to ask again. And so with that, we will dive right on in um, with the subfields in our department. So we have a couple different subfields. Um, as you can see here, and uh, the numbers or the notations you see to the right uh, correspond to the classes that fall under that subfield. So this gives you an idea of what to look for when you are looking at our uh, courses on the campus catalog. So if you are interested in courses that have to deal with public policy, you should be looking at classes that start with Poly 160 through Poly 169. Um, if you're really into comparative politics, um, then you would want to look at classes like Poly 11, which is Introduction to Comparative Politics, uh, which you may have actually completed already prior to joining us in the fall. Um, but then as far as the upper division level, you would look at Poly 120 to 139 noted courses. And so like I said, the subfields in our department um, really correspond also to our majors. Um, this is a little description of what it really means to, uh, you know, take classes in the different subfields. And also to the right, you can see that we have a little definition of what it means when we think about public policy versus public law. Um, so really thinking about the objectives, you know, that a government wants to set for itself. So um, policies relating to education or to the environment. So these are goals that the government sets for itself and, um, you know, all the entities within their control. And then the laws would focus on, you know, what are the tools and resources to help those entities get to where they need to be. We have nine majors in the department. Um, so our newest one is actually the one at the bottom, the political science, race, ethnicity, and politics major. We started this in fall 2020, so just a couple quarters ago, and we're really excited to have it as part of our major family. Um, we have one bachelor's of science, uh, that is the political science data analytics major, um, but all of these majors have a similar number of requirements. So it's four lower division courses and 12 upper division courses. And so uh, most of you all will probably come into our department having taken most of the lower division courses. Um, and so you would jump right into the upper division courses as well as maybe one or two of our lower division courses. Um, but the great thing about all of our majors is that there is an upper division elective component. So that means that if you have uh, any of the majors 
that have this concentration. So a concentration meaning, you know, like American politics, public law, so on and so forth. Uh, there's still a portion of your degree, your major, that you can take classes in our other disciplines. So um, I know like a lot of students may be interested in two or three different kinds. And so they ask us, you know, hey, can I take uh, classes in both? Yes, you can. Um, so perhaps you can choose a political science international relations major. You take the classes pertaining to international relations for that specific concentration, uh, which is five classes. And then those other seven classes for the upper division um, component, uh, you can take maybe a class or two in political theory, you can take a class or two in public policy, maybe you can take one in American politics, uh, whatever you would like. Um, so there is still flexibility in the classes you can take, even if you choose a concentrated major. We also have uh, this really cool joint program uh, that we just started this last year as well. So with this, it's a a joint program between our department and uh, the School of Global Policy and Strategy um, at UCSD. So it's a political science international affairs major and a master in international affairs. So for this major and this program, you would need to apply for it um, once you're already at UCSD. So it isn't something that incoming students like yourself um, or incoming freshmen um, can apply for right off the bat. Um, so the first cohort um, that is going to start actually this fall um, and they applied in the spring and we actually just heard back about those that were accepted. So we're really excited to help them transition into this new program. Some of them are transfer students as well. Um, I know it can be a little bit uh, intimidating. You're just coming in, you're just starting with us and then um, you know, you're already applying to a grad program, you know, your spring quarter. Um, but don't worry, you know, we're here to help you. We also have some informational videos on our website and on our department page. Um, and so the good thing for you all is you can get a head start um, in advising, in seeing what this program is about um, before you actually start with us in the fall. And then another uh, question that students often have is what's the difference between our department and then the international studies program? So these are two separate units on campus. Um, we have different majors, different requirements, <laughs> um, so on and so forth. And so something that I really want to um, encourage you all to do is uh, some research to see which one works better for you, whether it's the majors in our department or the majors in their department. Um, so I have this screen here just to show those differences. Um, our classes are, um, you know, or I'm sorry, our majors are not interdisciplinary. And what that means is for all of our majors, we require political science courses. For the international studies program, their majors are interdisciplinary, which means that they include uh, classes for their curriculum from different uh, departments on campus. They also require a language while we do not. Um, they have a slightly different number of majors um, than we do. And then um, something that students often kind of think about is really what classes fit for them. And I will say that one of their majors is the International Studies Political Science major, which requires eight political science courses but again, you need to consider the other requirements that they have and what perspective they are coming from. Um, but they're a great program and we just want to make sure that you all are making the best choice for yourself. Um, we also have a tentative course offerings list on our website already. We have uh, the courses we hope to um, have available for you all for the fall, for the winter and for the spring. So feel free to take a look at it in your free time. Um, so you can start planning. Um, and again, just letting you know, it is tentative. So it is subject to change. Um, I know that the classes or the schedule of classes, sorry, for this fall will actually be coming out uh, this next week. I wanna say on Wednesday. So, you know, feel free to take a look at that point um, just to see what is available. You all as transfer students will be 
um, registering for classes later in the summer, um, I wanna say August or so, um, but uh, we will have seats available for you all. So you know, try not to worry too much about um, not getting a seat in our classes. All right, so department opportunities. So again, we have lots of great classes that we offer. I would say that we add probably, I'd say five to eight, sometimes 10 new classes a year. Um, we add quite a bit, <laughs> but we do want to make sure that we are teaching classes that are relevant uh, to you all, to what's going on in the world, um, to the expertise of our faculty, um, and really making sure that we are keeping up with what is going on in the field of political science. Um, and we also offer professional development workshops. Um, these have continued uh, throughout this past year and a half on a virtual basis. And for most of them, we've been able to record those presentations and put them on our department YouTube page, um, which is really great. Just you know, a fun way for students who can make it to actually uh, learn about what was discussed. Um, but normally when we are in person, we like to order a small lunch, um, you know, some snacks and things for students that uh, come to these uh, presentations and workshops and um, really have them get to know different services around campus, um, such as the Career Center, um, the Transfer Triton Hub, uh, study abroad, maybe a workshop on graduate school, how to prepare, you know, what are the pros and cons, um, and just future programs and planning uh, opportunities that you all would want to see from us. We also have the Alumni Mentor Program. So uh, this was something that was launched a few years ago and it has two aspects to it. So it's when uh, students are matched with an alumni from our department and you have a career mentor and you also have an exploratory mentor. Um, so the great thing about this is you kind of get a little bit of insight from each of them on a different field in political science. And so again, this program has continued throughout the past year and a half virtually, um, and it's always a big success. And um, we always want to improve it over time just to make sure that it is worthwhile for our students. Um, it is something that we start in the winter quarter and you all, you know, would be eligible for that once you start with us in the fall. Um, so that's, again, a great way to just get a head start, get involved, feel connected with our department. We also have research opportunities. Um, the first one noted here is the research apprenticeship program. So this is where you work with a department mentor. So it's, a, it's a, actually a doctoral student. We have a PhD program in our department, which is super cool. And uh, you would work under this graduate student helping them with their research over the course of two quarters. Again, this is a winter and spring quarter. Um, so you would work as a research assistant and you would get credit for your major. So um, the great thing about that is here's an opportunity that you can take advantage of and it's not something that will affect your time to degree or it won't be an extra you know, burden on top of your other classes that you need to do. Um, there's also the uh, opportunity to do independent research, uh, also called independent study. So this is what the class noted as Poly 199. Um, you would do an independent research project with a faculty member in our department. Again, it's a really great way to build those research skills, um, you know, those analytical skills and really get a head start on what research is in political science. Um, so if you all are interested in that type of career path or you're thinking about graduate school, either of these opportunities are really great. And you don't need to have prior research experience, not at all. Um, in fact, most of the students that participate in the research apprenticeship program, for example, it's their first time with research. And we do tell that to the grad students so that they can scaffold, you know, their um, tasks and assignments uh, for you all um, so it's not overwhelming. Then there's the Senior Honors Program. Um, so this is something that you would do in uh, your senior year or your last year with us. Um, it is for our really high achieving students, uh, as you can see the eligibility being you know, a minimum 3.6 major GPA in our department. Um, some other eligibility criteria include 
having completed at least five upper division courses, all of the lower division courses for your major, and having a faculty advisor. Um, but again, this is a great opportunity for those of you who are thinking of going to graduate school or you want to really own in on your writing skills, um, you do get to connect with a faculty in our department. Um, so really developing that close working relationship with them and really learn what it is to you know, create a thesis, looking at research, uh, looking at articles in the discipline and um, really moving that forward and hopefully earning a level of honors in our department. Um, we do have a page for this program and you can read all of the theses that have earned a level of honors or higher um, since 2012. Uh, just the other day, I actually popped in the theses from this year. So that's up there. Um, a couple months ago, we also hosted a student experience panel that we recorded. Uh, that's on the page too. So if you want to hear how the program was for um, a few of last year's or this past year's cohort, um, that's again, a great opportunity to, to learn more. We have the local internship research program. So this is where you can uh, do an internship, get uh, credit like general units towards your degree. So not towards the major. Um, but if you want to move forward and do a research project or write a research paper, um, then you can enroll in the other course, the research seminar course, and then gain, gain credit for your major. Um, but this is working with one of the faculty in our department, and it's a really nice blend of an internship and a research project. Again, just getting you out into the community, um, getting that experience, and then also reflecting on that experience in an analytical way. All right, campus opportunities for major requirements. So the first one is the UCDC um, program and the UC Center Sacramento program. So, you know, complete transparency. This is a program that is available at all of the UCs um, in California. Um, so, you know, no matter where you go, uh, you still have the opportunity, opportunity to do this program. Um, but it's super great. And especially for political science majors, this is something that a lot of students uh, look forward to, they apply to. And uh, that's because you get to live and be in Washington, D.C. if you're in the UCDC program, and then be in Sacramento if you're in the uh, UC Center Sacramento program, have an internship and take classes that can, um, you know, give you credit towards your major um, or general units if you need that as well. And so, again, it's that nice blend of having an internship work experience, and then, you know, moving forward in uh, your academic path. So again, another opportunity that you can take advantage of without having to, you know, stay an extra quarter or have to manage on top of your other classes. Um, in this past year, it was a virtual experience, but I know that moving forward, they are hoping to start opening it, it up for in-person, perhaps at a limited capacity. Um, but if you have any questions about that, I definitely encourage you all to reach out to the coordinator of uh, the two programs on our campus. Um, and so you can find her information on the academic internship page, but we could talk about that a little bit more after the presentation as well. But it is something that I do recommend political science students consider, um, especially if they are wanting to go into policy work, um, politics, um, working in government, um, you know, really thinking about what are the opportunities you can have to network and learn about those different spheres of political science. And then for those of you that want to travel, go abroad, um, and increase your skills in those domains. There is study abroad. Um, I know that folks haven't been going anywhere in this past year, but hopefully moving forward, um, you know, as the world gets a little bit safer, uh, we can open up and this can be a possibility again for students. Um, again, just another opportunity for you to get credit towards either your political science major or, you know, perhaps a minor if you so choose to have that. Um, or even just getting credit towards your degree. 
Um, we do allow courses from study abroad to transfer into the political science majors as long as you get approval from us first. And the super cool thing about being a political science major is that the discipline exists everywhere. Um, in the world. And so you can essentially go to any country and um, any university in that country and find political science classes. Again, only if you want to transfer uh, back courses to the major. You don't have to. Um, some students go abroad multiple times. Some students go abroad to fulfill a language requirement. Sometimes they go abroad to fulfill their college requirements. Um, so you don't have to go for your major, but um, just being part of our department, we do have that extra benefit of um, having available courses worldwide. And as far as the global concentration, um, this isn't a major like what I was talking about before when I said, you know, like the um, American politics concentration. This is just um, a separate area of your transcript where you can just highlight that you have this Know, global awareness, global experience, um, because you are bringing in units from study abroad, you do have proficiency up to a certain point in a second language, and you've taken a few classes that have global content um, within our department. And careers in graduate school. So at some point, you all will be graduating um, from UCSD and from our department. So we want to make sure you are prepared um, so one thing I like to tell students right off the bat is, you know, as a political science major, just know that it is not boxing you into a specific career. There are so many different areas that you can go into. Um, however, it does require that you put in the work too. So that includes going to class and doing well in your classes, but then also thinking of the other opportunities that you can incorporate into your time at UCSD, even as a transfer student. Um, so that might be having an internship, that might be volunteering, that's even having either an on-campus or off-campus job. It could be networking, it could be taking part in department programs like research or that alumni mentor program or, um, you know, UCDC, UC Center Sacramento study abroad, um, and really thinking about what are you bringing to the table uh, to an employer or to a graduate program. And is what you're doing something that they want? Um, so really just think about those opportunities that you have um, on your plate um, and make sure that you really try and think about how you can enhance who you are um, so that you can have the best experience for yourself. We do have a lot of career resources for political science students. Um, so uh, you see this list right here. Um, the Career Services Center on campus is a really great resource. I always refer students there. Same with our mentor program. Uh, for those of you who are interested in going to law school, we do have the Board of Pre-Law Advisors. So these are uh, students in our PhD program who went to law school, completed law school, practiced law, and then are now in our program. So they have that experience that they can share with you. Um, and these are also students who are your TAs in um, your upper division courses. So definitely connect with them. Um, we have their information on our website um, and they're a really great resource. Um, we have a handbook. Uh, it's currently in the office, uh, gathering dust. <laughs> but once we are in person, it is something that students can check out uh, for about a week at a time if they wanna learn more. Uh, we also have a LinkedIn page. Um, so. Uh, just the title I wrote there is how you can find us. Um, so sometimes we post opportunities, workshops, information, so on and so forth. Um, and then our website. So we have a dedicated page pertaining to career and graduate school. Um, we are updating it all, all the time, um, just as I find more resources or students share resources with me. Um, so again, just keep in mind how you can really understand what's best for you moving forward. Um, for those of you who are interested in the area of law and politics, we have this initiative um, in our department um, that has allowed us to have workshops, have um, events, have um, really great speakers or 
um, really great instructors come to the classroom and teach and talk about what you know the law is and what that looks like. Uh, so for those of you who are on the political science public law uh, major, you'll notice that a majority of the classes pertaining to your concentration fall under this area of law and politics. And you'll be taught by individuals who have experience, you know, being a lawyer, um, working in the legal field in different areas as well. And so it's a great way to really uh, get super involved and know about what that field is um, at no cost to you, of course. So um, again, check out our page on this. And once you are part of our department, we will have uh, programs and events, some of which have already been recorded. Um, so again, you can find that on our department YouTube page um, and take a look at that um, maybe even throughout the summer when you all have time. Um, so like I said before, we offer a lot of workshops, we offer a lot of events. Um, this did not stop um, just because we went virtual. Um, so I have a list of, uh, you know, workshops that we did have over the course of this academic year. Um, you can find those again on our website, um, on our YouTube page, and we ask students all the time, you know, what do you want to see from us? And we like gathering their, um, their insight because it's a great way for us to see, you know, what are you all interested in and what can we do to bring that information forward? So, um, if there is something you feel like we're missing that may be achievable for us to uh, create as a workshop, um, we definitely invite that feedback too. So excellence in and out of the classroom. So again, UCSD is a top research institution and our department is no different. Uh, we have amazing faculty in our department. Uh, these are just a few of them. Um, Tom Wong, so he focuses on immigration, citizenship, um, migrant egal illegality, um, and so really thinking about, you know, what that looks like in terms of the political realm. Uh, Molly Roberts, uh, her focus is on methodology, data, and what that looks like in the political sphere. Um, she is actually going to be one of the co-instructors for the Senior Honors Program this year, so you know, if that's something you're interested in, um, that might be something you can connect with her on just to see what that experience is like for students. Uh, Thad Kauser, he is also our department chair and his focus is on uh, like American politics at the state and national level, um, as well as how uh, social media uh, influences politics as well. Um, and then Marissa Abrahano, so her research is in American politics, but then mostly focused on um, racial and ethnic politics as well. Um, and so again, these are just some uh, great faculty in our department who teach our classes um, and are also involved in the different political spheres. And of course, just wanting to brag a little bit about our department and UCSD in general. Um, so we pulled up some stats um, of just how our department ranks and UCSD ranks. Um, so just sharing that information with you all, because I know that it can be an important factor um, in your decision making. And as far as our department, um, a lot of these rankings pertain to our graduate program. Um, however, one thing I do want to make note is that, again, we have a graduate program and we have an undergraduate program. So the same faculty that teach our graduate courses teach our undergraduate courses. And so just know that you are getting that excellence and you are getting those networking opportunities to connect with our faculty and our graduate students and really thinking about what that means for you moving forward if you are thinking about graduate school. So, so many students ask me, you know, who do I talk to about grad school, especially if I want to, you know, go into political science and it's like, well, talk to the grad students, they're in it, <laughs> you know, talk to your professors they were in it at one point. Um, and there are also a handful of current grad students who were undergrads in our department as well. So um, that's something that, you know, you can find out and connect with them on, on how that transition was. Um, I know that as far as workshops go, that's something I would like to have more of in the future of having our graduate students 
you know, speak on a panel, have our faculty speak on a panel to undergrad students and explain to them, you know, what was graduate school like? What do students need to be aware of? And um, how they can prepare themselves for the future. And student involvement and support. Um, so we have a few student organizations that pertain to political science. Um, the first one being the Political Science Student Association. So they're a great group of students who are trying to have an inclusive environment for all of the political science students in our department. Um, then there's Mock Trial, again, which is pretty big, Model UN, there is Pi Sigma Alpha. So this is, um, you know, a national political science honor society. It's something that uh, my colleague Joanna oversees now. So if you have any questions about it, she would be the one to ask. Then there's also a Kappa Alpha Pi, which focuses on pre-law. There's a prospect journal. Um, and then there's the Journal of International Affairs at UCSD. Um, so again, just some organizations to keep in mind. Um, there are plenty more though. Um, and you don't have to be part of an organization that focuses on political science, um, you know, that you have other interests. Um, so feel free to take a look at the um, Center for Student Involvement's website, um, just so you can kind of see what exists at UCSD. And if you don't find anything that you're interested in, well, maybe that's an opportunity to create your own organization once you get here. All right, and then transitioning to UCSD. So um, I know that it can be pretty difficult to go from you know, one institution like a community college and then going to um, a university like UCSD. I myself was a transfer student. I started out at a community college and then I transitioned over to a UC school. And um, as much as we can warn you all that it's quick, um, you are going from a semester system to a quarter system, um, you just gotta experience it. So we know that for some students, it's not always the easiest and that's okay. So just know that there are supports here on campus uh, for you. Um, I've listed just a few here. Um, but there are plenty more uh, support services, uh, community centers um, that are there to help students once they get to UCSD and make them feel comfortable and confident um, in what they are pursuing and what they are doing. Um, so I did just want to highlight a few and it's a mix of academic um, supports as well as some personal supports. So for example, the bottom one, uh, counseling and psychological services, um, they've been a great resource for students, um, especially over this past year or so uh, with COVID. Uh, there's also the Office for Students with Disabilities, so that's OSD. Um, so if you have a disability, uh, whether you know it's visual, non-visual, any sort of um, you know thing that um, doesn't allow you to be as successful as you feel like you can be. Um, and you need accommodations, um, this is the office for you. Feel free to connect with them super early, um, especially once you accept um, that you are going to be a student here. I recommend reaching out just so you can have all that paperwork taken care of and ready to go once you start with us. Um, I made the note before, but Joanna, um, she, my colleague, uh, she is the OSD liaison. So what that means is when you all have questions about um, you know, getting your accommodations and courses, uh, once you have that letter that lists what those accommodations are from OSD, she would be the resource to go to to help make that connection between you and your professor. Um, so just keep in mind that we are here to help you the best that we can. Um, something that I'm really excited to talk about is the Triton Transfer Hub. Um, I know I made a mention of them before, uh, but this is definitely for you all. Um, so it opened to students about two years ago. Um, so it's super new. Um, they're still growing. They're really excited to have a bunch of workshops and events for students. Again, whether that's virtual or when we go back in person, they have peer coaches, they have different study spaces, uh, they host different workshops. Um, I know that with our department, um, like I said, being a former transfer students, student, I connected with them um, as soon as I could. And we have joint workshops that I invite students to. 
um, just because we want to make sure that you all are feeling supported when you're here. Um, you know, as far as our department goes, uh, about two thirds, or I'm sorry, one third of our student population um, in the department uh, are transfer students. So you all make up a really big part of our community. And so we want to make sure that you all know that there is support for you as you move forward in your academic journey. And then uh, the advising structure at UCSD. So it's a little bit different than other universities. Uh, we have what's called a multi-tiered advisement. So um, I would be your department advisor um, as a political science major, but then you also have college advisors. So they have a uh, focus on your general education requirements. Um, so you would come to us with any questions that pertain to your major, um, internship opportunities pertaining to your major, your classes, so on and so forth. Um, and as far as your college, you would connect with them um, on any other matters. Right now for the summer, um, we anticipate that our advising is going to be through uh, what's called the Virtual Advising Center. And so this is where you can type in your questions, it gets sent to us, and then we answer them back, um, usually within like 48 hours or so, and then not on the weekend or holidays. Um, but with that, that's actually the end of our presentation. So I just want to flip it on over and take a look at the chat or the Q&A um, in case anyone had any questions. Um, I don't see any questions right now, but if anyone wants to pop in anything, we do have time, um, I believe just a few minutes. So feel free to pop it in. <laughs> but I know that was a lot of information to cover. So um, feel free to, again, take a look at this presentation. Um, at a different day, once it's on our website, uh, feel free to connect with us over the next couple of months. Um, something that students forget is that we are still working during the summer. Um, so our department, pretty much every single unit on campus, including the support services. So feel free to reach out to them as well um, because they are happy to help. Um, so I do see that there is a question from someone that says, how difficult is it to switch majors uh, within the department, as in, um, you know, switching from comparative to international relations? Um, so with that one, it's actually super easy. Um, our uh, majors are not capped. So once you enroll in classes for the fall quarter, um, at that point, you would be eligible to switch your major. And so this is done through uh, the change of major tool. And um, what it is, is you just you know, type in that you wanna change your major. Um, depending on how many units you have, you may need to provide a quarter by quarter plan, um, just so we understand that you are going to you know, take the classes you need. Um, and then your major is switched. And um, it's just, I think you need to wait about two weeks or so before you can change your major again. All right, so another question is, do students need to declare uh, their major in international relations to apply for the, um, the BAMIA program? Or can anyone in the political science department apply? Um, yeah, it's any of our majors can apply for the program. Um, just connect with us first because you know, the requirements for our other majors are slightly different than the international affairs major. So we just want to make sure that you know you're on the right path. Um, can we enroll for summer classes? Uh, yes, you can. Um, I know that some students, whether they're incoming freshmen or transfer students, take summer classes before starting with us officially in the fall. Um, but you would actually connect with summer session about that. So. Um, they have their own separate website, um, own separate process uh, for doing that. So um, just head on over to their website, uh, which Joanna will pop in the chat, and um, you'll be able to um, move forward with that. Is it possible to take a minor or a double major as a transfer student? Yes, absolutely. Um, I know something that happened to myself when I was a transfer student is that um, you know, once I finished my major classes, there was still a chunk of units I needed to satisfy in order to 
get to the minimum number needed to graduate. And so that's a great opportunity for you to see what type of minors that UCSD has, what type of majors, um, just so you can you know, satisfy those units in a way that works for you. Um, I know that a lot of political science students minor or major in um, areas that are also within the social sciences. So like economics or sociology, even like history, communication, things like that. But um, what you would do is you would connect with the other department that houses the major that you're interested in or the minor, and you would connect with them just to see what requirements they have. And if anything that you've taken at your previous college um, can actually satisfy some of those requirements as well. Um, but yeah, it's totally possible as a transfer student. And uh, another one, another person asks, when should I start the process of doing a study abroad program? As soon as possible, especially as a transfer student. Um, like I said before, uh, our department and other units on campus, like the study abroad office, are open during the summer. So feel free to start that conversation with us right then. Um, it'll allow us to help you determine where you want to go, you know, what type of classes uh, you would take, if there are any um, particular requirements you need to meet, if there are scholarships you can apply to, so on and so forth. All right, and then um, one person asks, if we declare a minor, do we need approval from the major department as well, um, assuming there is course overlaps? Um, so with that one, um, you don't need our approval. Um, you would need to get the approval of the other department, um, but it is you know, worth checking in with us to see if there are any courses that might overlap. Um, so students can overlap up to two upper division courses between uh, a major and a minor, and then between uh, two, like a double major. It's just both units need to agree. Um, so when it comes to you being a political science major and then choosing a minor, um, the only courses we would allow to overlap are political science courses. Um, so for example, one that I know right off the bat is there is a, a law and society minor that's um, run by Warren College, um, but any student can be part of that minor. And so uh, they have some political science course options and that are part of their minors. So you would be able to overlap those courses, but we wouldn't accept like a sociology class, for example. Where can you find a recording of this meeting? Um, so give it maybe a week or so, um, and then we will be putting it on our department YouTube page. And then we will also be putting it on our department website. So we have a section under our undergraduate programs tab. And I believe I've titled it uh, like new and prospective students. And then there's going to be a subsection uh, for transfer students. And then I put the recording there as well. Um, if you want to change your concentration, so this is another question, if you want to change your concentration, should you do that before or after you accept your admissions offer? Um, that's not something you can do beforehand. Um, it's something that you would accept your admissions offer. You would wait, you would need to wait until you start enrolling in fall classes, which again would be around August. Um, and then at that point, you can change your major. And I think, that is it. <laughs> so with that said, uh, thank you all for being here. Um, I know that was a lot of information, so I'm super happy that this is recorded for you all. Um, but if you do have any questions in the meantime um, that wasn't covered through this, feel free to uh, send us an email. You can find our contact on the department website um, and we'll do our best to answer them. Um, but we are really excited um, to see you all in the fall and hopefully in person, but you know, maybe if it's virtual in some capacity, then it might take a little bit longer, but um, we are excited to have you all here and um, join us in San Diego. So hope you all have a great day. Bye.